All right, so this one is uh, going to be pretty painless. Um, looks a little weird at first, but I bet you we will be able to do it in two lines. So if you'll notice, we're trying to prove kind of, I don't know what to call this other than maybe like a weak reflexivity, because we're trying to prove that for some x, g, x, x. So some relationship or function g that operates on a singular variable. And right up here we have um, all x, y, g, x, y. So thankfully both of these variables are uh, connected to the same quantifier. Now I'm going to do a bit of a shortcut. If you've watched my previous videos, I haven't done this before. Um, since these two variables are both bound by the same, uh, let me circle this, both of these variables are bound by the same quantifier. I can actually substitute them both at the same time. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say G, C, C. Um, and that's just going to require one universal elimination, line one. And I'm doing C for X and C for Y. And that's that. And now, true to my word, I think we can, in fact, just say uh, exists an X such that G, X, X, by existential initialization of line two, x for c. And that's it. We're done. Uh, just to kind of recap, g, x, y, but this is a universal quantifier, so we can use the same variable twice. It doesn't really matter because it's for any x, y, including, you know, x twice. Then we come down here, and then we say there exists an x such that g, x, x. If this was a, a universal instead, like if we were trying to say um, for all x, g, x, x, that's a little bit harder to prove. I think we still could. Um, yeah, I think we uh, we actually still could because this is a universal. So you could say for all x, y, um, g, x, x, or g, y, y, whatever you wanted to do. But this is even easier to prove. And we got there in only two lines. So universal elimination, existential initialization, and we're done.